what's up you guys welcome back to my channel if you're new here hi hello i'm lydia and if you are new here make sure you hit the subscribe button turn notifications on and while you're down there give me a thumbs up because it really does help me out now as you read in the title today we're going to be talking about what happens when you go to a and e for feeling suicidal and the reason i'm approaching this in a sort of a relaxed manner is because it's okay to seek help when you're struggling. However, this is not going to look very good for the NHS. Don't get me wrong, I appreciate the NHS. I don't want it to go privatised. Obviously, I can only speak from what the UK has to offer. I, I don't know how the US works. I don't know how Australia works. I don't know how Japan works. Let's jump into the video. So first things first, you've turned up at a and &E and you're in the Buckingham phase. What do you say? You say, hello, I'm here because I'm feeling suicidal and I need some support. But then note down while you're there, you have to sit and wait. You get triaged, they check your vitals, make sure you're okay, ask if you've done anything, if you've self-harmed, if you have anything on you that you can hurt yourself with, just things like that. The triage team are genuinely quite nice people and the only time I've had issues with the triage team is when the police have been with me because I don't know, I, don't, I find it really hard to say that I'm suicidal when I'm suicidal. I struggle with that and it made it worse having police there and because I couldn't answer the police ended up saying she's suicidal. Then we got shown to the back waiting stage or if you're Northwood Park Hospital you throw me in seclusion. It literally happened to me. I literally got put in seclusion. They let me on my phone, thankfully. I wasn't allowed at anything. I, I brought a blanket with me. I was allowed that when it was bedtime. I wasn't allowed a pillow. So, a &E, we're in the back waiting area, waiting to be called through to the main part of a &E. For some reason, they always put me in majors. I mean, it was a bad, but yeah, I've always been put in majors. I don't think I've ever been in anything lower than major for anything, diabetes included. So I got a bed. Sorry, I went in a bit into a bit of a dream then. <laughs> Dissociation, like what? I'm trying to make a video. Brain, please. So once you're in a bed, you then have to wait. We wait to see a doctor, the doctor comes in and asks how, what's going on, what's going on, why are you feeling suicidal, and just asks if there's a genuine anything else they can do to support you while you wait for the mental health assessment. But yeah, the, the, the doctor talks to you, they can't really do much, so they offer you medication if you need it, and they leave you in a room. I'm, I've always been on one-to-one, -one, so I have a nurse, not a nurse, a healthcare assistant sat with me. So because I have that, it lowers the opportunity to hurt myself. So then you're, you're waiting for the mental health team. They're called the mental health liaison team. And they are the worst mental health team ever. They're worse than the fucking crisis team. My god, I've never been so dismissed, encouraged to commit suicide, told I'm a time waster, oh, I don't mean to put people off going to a and &E, but this is my experience, they come and assess you, I was, I was in recess once and because I'd overdosed on propanol, which is dangerous, don't do that. It's a warning. But down the pills. But, yeah, I was in recess once and this mental health liaison team person, one person, came and sat on the bed and just had a chat about university with me and said okay you can go. Just because I'm at university does not mean I can't be in mental health crisis. When I say they are the worst team I've ever experienced, I mean it. They don't refer to crisis teams. If you need follow-up, you have to go to the hospital and see them for your follow-up. It's just so wrong how they operate, and 
I can 100% say that lives have been lost because they didn't intervene when they could have the chance. Which is a really sad reality. I'm not saying don't go to A&E because if you're suicidal you should go to A&E and seek help. You never know, the doctor that's an A&E might help you, the HCA or it might help you. You might have a decent mental health liaison team in your hospital. But, yeah. It really does depend on the hospital. My experience was based on what I went through in Preston, which is the northwest of England. While I've lived in London, I've I haven't seen a mental health liaison team and gone home. <laughs> Whenever I've been seen in London by the mental health liaison team, I've been hospitalised because I needed the hosp I needed to be in hospital apparently. I still disagree, but it is what it is. I love my rubber ducks from Christmas. This is my favourite one. Ducks are my special interest, if anyone's wondering why I like ducks, as much as I do, it's my special interest. So yeah, thank you for watching this video, if you're new subscribe, join the growing family, we're nearly at 6.5k which is absolutely amazing, we've hit it, nearly hit it quicker than I thought we was going to hit it. So, yeah, if you haven't already shared my videos, please feel free to share them. I made, well, Jordan, my employee apparently, I'm kidding, I love you Jordan. My friend Jordan made a Facebook group for this channel where we can talk about our experiences. I will link that in the description down below. Uh, I have a Facebook page that has been reactivated. So go check that out, links in the description down below. And if you didn't know, I have a Patreon where I make one video a week that's Patreon only, you will only ever see it on Patreon. I recommend checking that out. Thank you for watching and I will see you in my next video. Peace.